Okay, so now that you know the definition of the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change, we want to look at a function and its derivative from a graphic standpoint. So analyzing the curves of a function and the curves of that function's derivative. So, for example, let's look at some effects. We want to use this graph of f of x to tell us something about the graph of its derivative, f prime of x. So we want to know what happens to the slopes of this function. Okay. So let's take a look. First of all, on this interval, from right here, oh, let's pick a different color. From this interval to this interval, we know that our slope is positive because our function is increasing, okay? So we know that our derivative is going to be above the x-axis. So here with red, f of x is increasing, meaning f prime of x is positive. Then all of a sudden, it slows down and stops right here where it's blue. So while our function slope is indeed positive, it's slowly approaching zero. Okay, so we're positive, 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 then becomes zero. So it looks like f of x is positive starting here and ends at zero here. Then, after it stops, it starts decreasing. f of x starts decreasing. So as you can see, it's a negative slope. So over here, f of x is decreasing, meaning f prime of x is negative or above the y-axis. And again, it's, it's, um, a negative slope, but it's slowly approaching zero. So while we may be negative, right here, we are approaching zero, okay? So we're, we hit negative, but we're approaching zero, we're speeding up. Then once we hit zero, once again, we become a positive slope, okay? Because our function is again increasing. So then our derivative is above the x-axis. However, it's slowing down once again to a stop right here. So while we're positive, we slow down to a stop and hit zero at this point. Then after that, oops, our function is again negative. Our function is again decreasing, meaning our slope is negative. But we eventually come to a stop. So we're a negative slope coming to a stop right here. Sorry. Right. Here, we stop and we just keep stop. We just keep our velocity just keeps being zero. So we stay here at zero. So as you can see, we can analyze what's going on with the slopes of f of x to get f prime of x. So this is f prime of x. Okay. So let's break down the relationship between f and f prime. We know that when f of x is increasing, that means our slope is positive. What's the slope of f? Well, it's its derivative, f prime. So when our f of x is increasing, our slope is positive. When f of x is decreasing, then our slope, f prime, is negative. And vice versa, right? If you are given f prime, you would find out what's happening with f. 
and so on. So you can use f to get f prime and f prime to get f. So you can do some practice. I'm going to give you the graph of f, given graph of f. Try to see if you can graph f prime. So let's say I give you this graph of f of x and this graph of f of x. And lastly, this graph of f of x. Okay, using these three graphs of f of x, can you try to graph f prime of x? So you may want to pause here and do this problem. Okay, so now that you've used f to graph f prime, we want to be able to also use f prime to figure out what f of x looks like. So for example, let's say I give you this graph of f prime. So now this is the graph of the slopes of the function. This is not the graph of the function. This is the graph of the slopes of the function. Okay, so slopes. f prime is your slopes, your rate of change, your velocity. Okay, so let's say f prime looks like this. And I ask you to go ahead and graph f using this graph. So let's take a look. Let's say let's graph f right here. We know that your slope from this interval to this interval is negative, meaning our function is decreasing. So right here, f prime of x is negative, meaning f of x is decreasing. So from this interval to this interval, sorry. From this x to this x, it looks like we're decreasing. Then our slope hits zero, so we stop for a second. And we start increasing. So then our slope is now positive. So our slope is positive right here above the x axis right here we're above the x-axis so our function is now increasing so we stop for a second oh sorry so first we're decreasing then we stop for a second then we start increasing until about this x value However, we also know that our slopes are first getting bigger, then they're getting smaller. So f prime of x here is increasing, then it starts decreasing. So it means we're speeding up, then we're slowing down. So our function is first called, you know, speeding up, our speeds are getting bigger, and then we start slowing down. So we're we're increasing the whole time but we start slowing down we're increasing the whole time because the slope is above the x-axis but we're slowing down because our slope start decreasing okay so then we start slowing down then again our slope is below the x-axis so our function is decreasing but as you can see, first we're slowing down, then we become speeding up. So first our slopes are, are um, 
becoming more and more negative, but then they start going towards the positive. So while we are decreasing the whole time, we are starting to speed up once again. So we're decreasing and then we start speeding up. Although we're still decreasing, I'm sorry. We don't start increasing. We're decreasing, but less so until about here. Okay. Then at this point, we again become a positive slope, meaning that our function once again starts increasing. And there's a potential graph of that right there. So you have to be able to tell the difference between f and f prime and use one to get to the other. So if f prime of x is speeding up, is increasing, f of x is speeding up. If f prime of x is decreasing, meaning that our slopes are getting smaller. So right here it's getting bigger, right here the slopes are getting smaller. So when our f prime is getting smaller, our f of x is slowing down. Okay. This concept of speeding up and slowing down is called concavity. Okay. Concavity tells you your rate of change of your rate of change, your acceleration. When you are concave up, so concavity tells you the rate of change of your rate of change or your acceleration. When you are concave up, it means your speeds are increasing, meaning you're accelerating. Speeds increase. When you're concave down, It means your speed is decreasing and you are decelerating. Okay? So, in a picture or a shortcut, you can think of concave up as up like a cup. Because as you can see, your slopes here are getting bigger. First, they're really negative. Then they become more and more positive. So they're speeding up. This is a graphic of that. Concave down, on the other hand, a shortcut is down like a frown. So something that looks like this. As you can see here, your slope are getting smaller. First they're positive, then they become zero, and then they become negative. So your slopes are literally decreasing. Okay, so this is concave down. So our shortcut could be up like a cup, down like a frown. But make sure you understand what's happening, that your speeds for concave up are getting bigger, whereas for concave down your speeds are getting smaller. Okay? So um Maybe you can practice analyzing a function. Why don't you mark on this function, um, label all the parts that are increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, and any local minimum or maximum. Okay, so take um, this function and go ahead and label it as best as you can. Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? Where is it a minimum? Where is it a maximum? And where is it concave up and concave down? Um, you draw that. Okay. So go ahead, practice with this.